How do you remember the internet when it was new? Not like 1996 new, but new as in when you first encountered it. The time that I remember it best would have had to been around 2009, back when I was still in elementary school. I just got a laptop for my birthday that year, and that meant that I would be able to use the internet unsupervised for the first time. I remember watching the rise of Rage Comics, learning about the hacktivist group Anonymous, and of course, visiting the definitive meme site at the time, I Can Has Cheeseburger. I imagine a lot of people cherish their early memories of surfing the web, and I even bet a lot of people watching this that are around my age have a similar experience to that of my own. These memories tend to stick with you for a long time. but. There's a specific one that I know I'll always remember. One of my favorite early internet experiences has to be visiting Zombo.com for the first time. Welcome to Zombo.com. This is Zombo.com. Welcome. This is Zombo.com. Welcome to Zombo.com. You can do anything at Zombo.com. Anything at all. The only limit is yourself. Welcome to Zombocar. Welcome to Zombocar. This is Zombocar. Welcome to Zombocar. So that's pretty much it. A basic flash site with a blinking pinwheel accompanied by a voice endlessly telling you how awesome the site is. That's the entire website in a nutshell. But for those of you who have just experienced Zombocom for the first time, I wonder if you had the same thought that I did all those years ago. The thought that maybe there's an interesting story behind this. On today's episode of Internet Underground, we're going to try to find out what that story is. Zombo.com first appeared on the web on November 28th, 1999. The site was created as a parody of tacky flash website preloaders that were quite popular back in the early days of the internet. It was originally linked around by faculty and students at George Washington University, but later gained more widespread popularity after being shared on sites like FARC. Zombocom eventually found itself being used as a sort of rickroll back in the early 2000s. And that's really all it's ever been since. But there's still one thing missing here. Who created Zombocom? When looking at the Whois record for Zombo.com, we can see someone by the name of Joshua Levine as the domain register. It just so happened that Josh also turned out to be the creator of a small website called 15footstick.com, which is also actually advertised in the Zombo.com source code. After looking around the site, it seems like 15footstick was an independent record label that shared experimental music. Makes sense when you consider the oddity of Zombo.com. Josh later came out as the creator of Zombo.com in 2001. In an email, Josh explained the meaning behind the word Zombo. Well, as it turns out, Zombo is an African word, a region in Angola and an African surname amongst other things. I chose the name based on a different definition, however. A friend of mine used the word Zombo to refer to a male zombie, which is what she learned in her English class. When it came time to name the website, the name Zombo just sort of popped up. All right, so now we get the origin of the name, but is there an actual deeper meaning behind this website? On the 15 foot sick frequently asked questions page, we can find out a bit more about Zombocom. What is Zombocom? Zombocom is what you make it. That sounds crazy, but it is true. How could it be any other way? I know, but what is it? Sorry, but if you're in the mood for a definition, you probably came to the wrong website. However, if you're not bothered by the logic of this whole thing, I would urge you to consider this. Zombocom is a portal without a door. There is no opening or closing at Zombocom. There is only the passing of seasons. It is another ring in the tree. It is not only the birds, but all of life that moves from winter to spring. Are you always so vague? No. Okay, so those responses make it quite clear that the true meaning of Zombocom is open to interpretation, with no clear hidden significance. I do think that it's a part of our nature to always look for the deeper meaning though, especially in things that seem so simple. That being said, there are still a few mysteries surrounding Zombocom. The first being, what music is playing in the background? After scouring the Wayback Machine, I didn't come up with much of an answer, but did find some clues. On the same 15 foot stick frequently asked questions page, there is a line that references a Zombocom album that would feature the soundtrack to the site. I don't think anything came of it though. 
It's unclear whether the Zombocom background music is lost media or just remains unreleased. The next mystery is, who is the voice of Zombocom? I did my usual internet sleuthing, but again, couldn't find a clear answer. These questions have been pondered since the site began, and not too much progress has been made. I'm going to try sharing this video with the folks over at r slash internet mysteries to see if we can revive the investigation. To be honest, I just think it's crazy that Zombocom has lived on through all this time and has been on the internet longer than pretty much every website we use today. In fact, it even survived the death of Flash. The site now uses HTML5 and it's like nothing ever changed. Nowadays, Zombocom mainly serves as a reminder of the playful and experimental nature of the early internet. Zombocom's legacy has lived on through webcomics, parodies, and even a VR port. And it's still beloved by many, like the drummer of the band Blur, Dave Roundtree, who cited Zombocom as his favorite site on the internet. And that's pretty much the story behind Zombocom. If you've got nothing else to do today, I would highly recommend opening up your browser of choice and visiting Zombo.com. It's one of the very rare portals that sends you back to when the internet was new. My name's Luke Sims, and this has been Internet Underground. And always remember, the only limit is yourself. Thank you.